Greetings. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Um, no face today, just hands, just hands. Um, I was really anxious. I wanted to get this, this tarot, uh, spread up for you, um, in time for Beltane, in case you wanted to do this yourself. I love this spread. It's really fun. I've done some other spreads using the Bonefire. That's what I'm using today, the Bonefire Tarot. I love this deck. It's crazy. Um, the artwork is, this artist um, who who created this deck is, she's in love with the tattoo, tattoo style artistry, as you can see. There's a lot of stuff, graphics and color hidden in each one of these cards. She's got a lot. And in the beginning, maybe when I got the deck, I was a little overwhelmed perhaps with some of the um, the graphics on the cards, you know, looking at all of it because it's a dark card and, you know, there's a lot to look at and, and you just don't see a lot of things in the beginning. But I really love it. I really love it. Um, I really love it for this time of the year, specifically. It is named Bonefire because... Um, there, in the beginning of the book, she explains about the, about Beltane and the customs of the ancient Celts at Beltane. Um, I want to say, I know this from from studying history, that um, the fires, first of all, in this world of the ancient Celts, they had a summer and they had a winter. There was no spring and there was no autumn. Um, that's why you hear the term summer and midsummer and midwinter and things. Um, but now, of course, we have the eight seasons. But at this time of the year, uh, after the long winter, which began at Samhain, and um, after the long winter, the they would extinguish their home fires, and because they've been tucked in all winter long, right? And it was time to release their cattle and things out into the out into the fields. And um, they had a Beltane, they had a cell, a festival of fire, Beltane fire, where they would. Um, do a do a ceremonial burn for is it, to cleanse and to renew. It was a period a period of renewal and cleansing. And at Beltane, when um, the be summer was beginning, they would take their old things, their old bones that they had collected, um, saved for sacrifice purposes. I want to say, as a student of history, I know that they the bones that came from their animals they butchered after the meat was gone. The bones were boiled, boiled, boiled constantly on the stove, adding whatever root vegetables or whatever grains or whatever they could to that to make pottage to survive on. In the spring, they would, of course, add more greeneries as, as the greens started arriving or in, like, let's say about in Mulk or past in Mulk. They would, they, when the greens started to grow again, um, they would add that for flavor. But those bones had been boiled for a long, long time, and they really lost their flavor anyway. So anyway, they were used ceremoniously to begin the fire, begin the fire, because this this um, celebration and renewal of renewal and cleansing was not specifically just for them and their homes and coming out of their homes like a spring cleaning. This was um, really to bless their animals and their herds when they're before they release them up into the up into the hills and out into the into the fields for pasture. So. Um, this was very, very important. Their animals meant everything to them. So that the very base of their fire that they had, their cleansing and renewal fire at this time of the year, were the, lie the bones, lie the bones of, of bones that they had saved. They had saved. They could be from deceased animals um, or, or that they had eat, animals they had eaten and boiled and boiled. <laughs> but anyway, that was at the base. They would also dispose of things in the fire that no longer, no longer served them, like um, this was a good time with the festivals and the coming together with other people <laughs> and hand fasts, etc. This was a good time for bathing. The weather was warm. People could bathe. And um, so their undergarments, some of their dirty and torn, worn undergarments might be burned in the fire while they made new from, they now had new garments that they perhaps fashioned over winter, etc. Anyway, it is all about renewing and cleansing. And I love this as for a tarot read She's got several really good um, spreads at the back, and I want to point out that she's she's a, she's not a a very experienced um, tarot reader. She says in her book here she reads, but she's not. She's an artist first off, and she got her inspiration from other decks, very few other decks when she was writing about them. This deck I love too because it has really 
This is one of my favorite things about um, getting some of these new decks, some of these decks that, that deviate a little bit from the Rider Waite or what we would traditionally um, read because this deck, she she doesn't, she, she, she ventures a little far away sometimes from the traditional meanings. She respects the traditional meanings of the cards, but she has her own spin on them, which is just so refreshing. I really, really <laughs> enjoy it so much. Some of the ideas that I've, I'm hearing from her, from her spreads and her readings. Um, anyway, this one reading she has here at the back of her book, back of the book, um, it's called the Bonefire Eight Card Enlightener. And I believe she said, I'm not sure, I think this is somebody, I don't know, somebody, I don't think she wrote, she created the spread. I think somebody else did, I'm not sure. I'm sorry to, to if I misspeak. But anyway, as you can see in the very beginning, I wanna tell you, this actually this card would go up here, but you can't see that. So I just put it here, I just put it here. That's the last card. But here we see what starts out to be almost like a Celtic cross um, that we have, um, here we have, this would be card one, and then card two is what is crossing card one. And then we have, um, I think she has next three and four, yes, three, three, four, and five. She has positions above and to the right and left of the center cross. Um, those are read together, finally these together, and then finally this one, and I'll show you that in a minute. But it's a very creative spread. It is it is so related to the fire and the cleansing of the fire, what she puts on for her meanings. Anyway, I wanted to show you, this is how it's actually laid out, if you can see that picture, I hope you can, um, in her book, card one, and then what is two is crossing. It's so card one is the bones, the dry bones that it was thrown into the fire, and then card two that crosses it, it says that is the flesh and flavor that are left on those bones okay, as they go into the fire. Then we have three, four, and five above, which is the spark of the fire as it is ignited, the warmth of that is produced from the fire, and the light that is emitted from the fire, cards three, four, five. And then she has below here six and seven. What has been burned in that fire or damaged in that fire um, or reduced impossible by the fire. And number seven is what are the ashes? What is What lies within the ashes? How can we learn from and honor that which we have left behind? And then finally, she has a reborn, something being reborn, this would be eight, something being reborn um, and renewed as a result of this cleansing. Okay, it's a very fun reading and I'll go through it a little slower because I did put out a, a I did do the reading, and this is a legitimate reading for me. <laughs> and I have to be real careful because, you know, I've told you in the past that when I do readings for me, oh my gosh, they're so personal always, which they're they're likely to be. But for me, they just really hit home. And I don't want to give too much information. This is my private life, but I can do what I can to try to show you how I go through this. Um, so anyway, um, I also want to say I will remind you at this point of the video, before I go any further, I have started to put links to the things that I'm showing you on my videos down below this in the description box. And the link to this book, I mean, to this deck, I will be sure to add because I know a lot of a lot of people that I, in my circle that read do not know this book. And I wanna be sure that you have an opportunity to get this if you want it. It's such a good book. It's such a good deck. It's not everybody's taste, I see that, but um, it's very interesting, especially if you use it in the timely fashion at this time of the year, it's particularly good. Okay, so in the first and two, so we're reading these in sections. We're reading the card one, okay, which is um, the, the dry bones, and card two, as the card, and what crosses it is the uh, flesh and flavor that are left on those bones. Okay, that's, we're really, we're, I think if you're a chair reader, you, you're familiar with this idea of a card and crossing the card, and that is the issue that, what about this card needs your attention? That's what's crossing it. And we see that in the Celtic cross, that's Celtic cross. We think of this as a Celtic cross, but it's really, here's the issue we're talking about. This, this is, you know, this is maybe representing me, let's say, and this is the issue that's happening right now. Okay, so, um, First thing I love so much about this, let's just look at the, so we're looking at cards one and two. And the first card for me that I got, let me put this down, is, 
I'm trying to find. I have a really bad um, layout here today. I hope you forgive this. I'm in the process of changing my light, my layout and stuff, trying to give you good lighting and things. It's so hard to do in my really old house, <laughs> but um, I'm trying. But anyway, this is um, the Queen of Wands. And oh, we know all about the Queen of Wands, don't we? Well, I thought it was really interesting in here because her take on the Queen of Wands is this is about the feisty side of, feminine, of femininity, which I love that so much. It's a feisty, and look at her, she's very, very feisty, isn't she? Um, and this is describing, I suppose, me, and it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, at this point in my life, I have to say, it's probably pretty accurate because it's, um, it, it can have some selfishness to her, and I, and there's no guilt about it, really, and I kind of am like that, too. I, I have my own selfishness, and, um, if I'm happy and I'm fulfilled, if we want to say me, uh, okay, according to this, I am, uh, I can really, I can contribute freely to other people, and that's pretty true. Um, it says she's the life of the party and a good communicator. And as long as everything is good, it's good. And when she turns away, she drops it like a brick. <laughs> but this part, which I was very um, touched in the reading, is the next part she goes on to say about the Queen of Wands is, Boredom and inertia are her enemies. And that is absolutely me. When I, I get bored, so if I'm bored, I am a boob. I can't hardly do anything. So I thought that was really on the money. And like I said, I don't want to give you a lot of information personal to me, but this is the kind of ways we want to look at this card first of all in the reading and we want to see how this applies to the querent. How does this apply to the querent? That's really what this first card is about. And the querent in this case are represented by the dried bones that are being put into the fire. Okay. Now, crossing it, she has the Two of Cups, which is the meat and flavor left on there. And, the, and for her, the Two of Cups is very much about um, physical love. And it's I know it's not for everybody and everybody's read, but in, for her, it's very much that. It's not just that. It's the transients of, of, of um, physical love. It's about physical contraction, a physical contraction that, that begins and is a very, very intense kind of a love affair. It just is all about the other person all the time, all the time, all the time. But it's like, you know, too much fire, too much fire, too much love, <laughs> really. It can burn out. It, it sometimes fails. But if it doesn't burn out, it, it will change. Nothing can stay at a certain level forever. And I think this was very telling for somebody like me who's been married now at this time of the year is 51 years. Um, Just at the end of the month, 51 years for me to a man that I fell in love with at 14. And, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, the love doesn't change. It's not that fiery, fiery love we used to have. It's something that's, that changes. It does change. It has to change. And she talks about this as, um, it's not such a bad thing, though. It's just such a bad thing. And some of us think, oh, and I think everybody who's been married a long time or who has aged or whatever thinks, you know, this is not necessarily a happy time. Well, it's happy because it changes that love changes in a bit and um and that's what's important that we accept that it's going to change nothing is going to stay exactly the same it's going to turn into something new um and i really like that a lot <laughs> her one saying was you know if life gives you oranges make art marmalade like you can remember the the past the passion the past and the intensity of your love in the past and all those things but if you're if you're happy, if you're lucky enough to still have that love, and it maybe it's not quite what it was, there's other things that are delicious about it. Like there's other things delicious about the orange, particularly marmalade, which I agree, it's very delicious. So to hold on to that, so this maybe is it an idea of the transition. Maybe if this is going to be the issue here, which is crossing, and it, it is very often the issue. But in here, it's just that flavor. It's the taste in the mouth. You know, it's a taste in the mouth that is left from this, um, from this love, okay? And how the Queen of Wands is responding to this, okay? The next three cards she has, um, I don't want to, I'm not beleaguering this point, I want to go on. The next three cards she has are cards um, three, four, and five, three, four, and five, and those are, um, oh, I want to say, this is one thing before I go on. I want to say this one thing. 
when I was talking about the Queen of Wands, this is one way that she deviates from the deck. She puts things in her artwork, like here is, I don't know if you can see it, but she has over her shoulder a black hat. And we don't often see that. And um, she has that black hat because she, if you get the, the book, this book, it explains why she put the black hat in there. But let's, you know, suffice it to say that it's in there as a reminder. She wants us as the reader of this, of this um, tarot reading, of this of the spread to read this and let the black hat serve as a reminder that um, there's a warning that we don't want to repeat old actions or behaviors. If we try to go back, if we try to go back, it will never benefit. If I want to go back in this case to this passion, 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 and go, I don't have any love at all. If I don't have this hot, hot passion, that's not helpful. That's not helpful to anybody. That's, it's just not even possible to begin anew after 51 years. You can't start all over again after 51 years, let's say. So don't try to get back into old patterns that are not going to serve anybody. That's, that's, she does these things which are not, you don't see that normally in the, like any other Rider Waite tarot, um, the Queen of Wands, or I don't see that very often in other Queen of Wands representation, but here she puts, she adds her little twist to it. That's what I'm saying I like so much. Okay, now on to three, four, and five. Three, four, and five are all about um, what happens when you light the fire. When the bones are thrown into the fire, of course, some things will burn off of the bones, but then the spark, of course, what starts the fire, that spark, it starts to fire, the warmth that comes from it, and the light that comes from it as well. Well, this is pretty interesting because here we have the four, of, the Ten of Cups, which in anybody's world, including the Bonefire Tarot world, the Ten of Cups is a very, very positive card. It represents in this deck emotional fulfillment, and it does in other decks as well. Um, it, but it says, um, when you're in the light of the moment, she says, you are powerfully centered. Do not waste that energy. Okay. Spread it around. Do the, you know, use it while you have it. Use it before you lose it. So while things are really good, when you first, when you first have that spark, and any time the spark comes back, use it. Okay. But sometimes things that are produced, sometimes some of the things that are produced from that fire are not necessarily positive. Sometimes there's a chance. Of here we have the Nine of Swords coming in. And the Nine of Swords is that dark, dark night of the soul. Okay. This is when we kind of kind of are disturbed. We go to bed at night and in the darkness we worry or we have sleepless nights. We worry or we're anxious or we let ourselves get into dark moments where we're saying, Oh, why doesn't we why don't we have this passionate love anymore? Why doesn't he rip his my clothes off when he comes in the door? You know, do he doesn't love me anymore? Does he not think anything of me? This is, this is where letting anxiety and old fears and childhood, you know, um, childhood, you know, if I go back to the beginning of my love at 14, what I thought at 14, if I start thinking like a 14 year old again, I'm really screwed, right? I am not 14. I have, can't let these kind of anxieties get into my marriage. This can't have any place in it. So what they're saying is when things are good, you celebrate it, take advantage of it. When things are a little shaky, when, you know, try to feel the warmth. You're still going to get warmth, okay? But as long as you don't let anything else into it, don't bring any old things into it, any fears or any, you know, don't don't ask for trouble if you don't have it. Don't ask for trouble if you don't have it. Just be satisfied with the fire. Just be satisfied with the warmth of the relationship and don't try to overthink it. And then we have the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords, which for everybody is that... Um, being paralyzed, but being, don't let it stop you, is what she's saying. Don't let anything, any fears or anything stop you, okay? Don't let any, any um, unfounded, you know, worries or anxieties stop you. The only thing that is stopping her right now is her inability to move. She, why is she there? Why is she so paralyzed? Why is she, is she, is she looking for something that she doesn't have? Is she suffering from... Oh, he doesn't love me anymore. I can't move forward. Or is there some kind of shame or fear? Or is there guilt? Or what is holding me back? Don't dwell on these things is what this reading is saying to me. Don't dwell on anything like that. And just go forward. Enjoy it when you can enjoy it. And when you can't, take action of your own. Just take action. She can get herself out of this mess. 
she can take action what she needs. Or she could just fold her, <laughs> well, she can't fold her arms because she's bound, but she can just, instead of worrying about it, just rest there a moment until it's time to take action. Okay. Then she has the two cards in the bottom um, representing what could be damaged or what could have been burned or damaged or re rendered impossible. What could it, what could the fire have burned away? Um, which there's a danger, you know, you can get, you can renew with the fire, but can also burn away things that maybe you don't want to burn away. And also, um, card seven is, uh, what do you find in the ashes after the fire has burned? Okay. So that's what we're looking at between, um, six, card six and card seven. So first of all, card six, we have the page of coins and the page of coins is all about, um, a, a grounded person, she's working, 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 because she's grounded, right? Um, may, the possibility of making something from nothing or adding value to something that's growing. And it tells you, if you have the confidence to do these things, to, to build and to work at what you need to work at, the universe will respond and it will um, it re lead, lead to success. You know, things will work out if you give it up to the universe and say, and as long as you're working at something and not totally abandoning all your responsibility, that you're still working, 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 and you have to trust that it's going to be okay. So this relationship of 51 years, even though it has changed, and maybe we're in the marmalade stage, um, as long as we're working at it all the time, it's, it's going to be fine. We have to trust that it's going to be fine. It's been fine for 51 years. It's going to be fine for 51 more, is what you're saying here. So this is um, after the, you know, the ick is getting burned away. Maybe there's been a period of ickiness, but once it burns away, we're left with something that we can, we, that, you know, there's hope, there's renewal. Okay. And the four of wands, that would be the ashes. And I love this. This is such an interesting, this is another different kind of take here. She compares these four of wands with like teenage girls who don't fit in anywhere. They're not popular, but they have found each other <laughs> with friendship, a unique friendship. And, um, it, it was just an interesting kind of a story. Let me see if I can look and see what she was saying about that. I thought she had some really cute, uh, let's see here. Um, the pair are gathered, she talks about the pair are gathered. Here these are, Two gawky, slightly gawky, gawky alternative type of girls, okay? And she says, um, they dress down to impress. Their golden crowns are plastic dress up. They're painfully self-conscious, They ex but yet exert a self-assured arrogance of their own worldliness. It's like people that call themselves geeks. They're so proud of being geeks. Where at the beginning, when they were geeks, they say they were geeks in high school. They didn't fit anywhere. Now they're, they're, they wear that as a badge of honor, a badge of pride, at least a lot of my friends. I don't like it too much because I don't like the term, but um, I understand what they're talking about. Anyway, it says the pair of these two girls are um, gathered under the four flaming wands. They're waiting for you to notice them. If you do, they will despise you. If you don't, they will hate you more. They carry traditional roses, symbols given by lovers yet that are yet to experience. They are indeed an ironic and prickly pair. They wait for you to make the next move. They have arrived, made the effort. One stares you down directly in the face. The other hides their eyes more confident behind her mask. The door remains open. They may run inside and try again tomorrow. Another look, different music, change in personality. I really like that because the four of wands is, you know, sometimes it's going to go for you. Sometimes it's not going to go for you. Sometimes you're going to have confidence. Sometimes you're going to have worry. And that's really what it's all about. That's actually what is going to be left. When you burn the fire, you don't have any guarantees, but it is a chance to renew. It is a chance to go again, a chance to let's get rid of the old and we're going to start it again. We're going to have that sense of burning off the old and keeping that fire, getting that a new flame, a new spark, a new heat from the fire up and go on from there because it's going to go on. And here, this was so, I love this so much. The Three of Cups is my final card. Um, and her Three of Cups, Maybe a little different from some, but it represents friendships of different people, maybe women. It also represents to her the three um, stages of womanhood. And I love this so much as a crone. I particularly love this idea. 
And she's talking about the swirling of the women here in the mix of these three in the in the water, stirring up emotions and reminiscence. We are what we remember. We are what we are today. We are what we will be in the future. And that's all, that's what we are. We're just all of those things together. Okay. It can also be applied to friends too, that your friends, you make up you, you, and you, but together you make up something entirely new and different. So I really, really love that. And here she is saying for the future coming out of this, um, tend the garden of your friendships, tend the garden, don't allow anything to wither and dry. And that includes the friendships with yourself. You know, you got to keep up with your friends. Don't let you get so easy to have your friends fall away. It's so easy for you to have pieces of yourself falling away. And it doesn't seem so obvious in your youth, but when you get to be a crone, you will notice you still hold on to your youth. You still hold on to the mother. You still hold on to those those times. And the crone, just as much, just as much. It's all one. I'm still the same person. I'm still the same person that I was when I had the Romeo and Juliet um, romance with my husband at 14. I'm still the same person I was. Okay. This was a really fun reading. I love this so much. Um, I didn't really get into it too in too detail because again, it's a personal reading. I don't like to do that. But um, this, I I, rec I recommend, I'm stuttering. <laughs> I recommend if this kind of thing, if you enjoy looking into alternatives, and I think a lot of you are collectors of decks and you're interested in different kind of graphics, this looks to the first at first at first view when I saw these this how these were illustrated I'm thinking well is this a young person's deck I think I saw that well no the more I get into it I think no it is not a young person's deck this is a deck for all 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 people all people just like this because we are made up we are so complex of all we have been all we will be and who we are now and I think that really says a lot on this thing. But anyway, this was a real fun deck to get. Um, and I and it was interesting to read her progress. If you're interested in reading these books that you get, the ones that are not just that little white book that comes in those tuck boxes, this is this is a gift. When you get a book like this that is really personal about how the cards were designed and how the author, what they mean for you to see in that card um, or give you some ideas of what you can see in the card, I really, really love that. And... Um, it's worth the read. It's just worth getting it for the read, if anything. But I love the deck. Again, if you want, if you want, if you're interested in purchasing the deck, I will give you a link below. And I appreciate it if you follow my links because um, it helps me out a lot. Anyway, that was just a, hopefully a quick reading for Beltane. And I wish you all the blessings and joy that comes with Beltane. And, um, and I will talk to you soon. As always, I am Rebecca, and I wish you blessings.